Liverpool fan in Japan. Hello, YouTube Liverpool fan in Japan. It's Miyazaki Mansai. We have beaten Ipswich two nil away. Arna Slot's slot machine is in full effect, and he's cooking up some special gravy. And by that, I mean Graven Birch. What an excellent performance by Ryan Gravenberch. Him in the deep lying position, wow, he showed attributes that many people didn't know capable of. His dangly long legs, physicality, ability to retain the ball, dribble past the first press and play the ball through the lines. Absolutely amazing. It was actually his ball that released Trent Alexander-Arnold under pressure because he went sideways, lateral running. Released Trent Alexander-Arnold who put a perfect through ball into Mo Salah. One look, head up. Right footed cross into Diogo Jota de Slaughter and off we go 1 0. The opening goal is the most important and that could have a bearing in the player ratings I'm going to give slightly later. But I want to say thank you to absolutely everybody who joined me on the live stream. Concurrently, we had more than 120 viewers. That's absolutely amazing for the first live stream. I'm still working on the stream. I'm going to put animations, I'm going to put the lineup, I'm going to put the gifts and people coming on as well and interactive features when we do score a goal. I'm working on my stream deck buttons which I can press and things magically happen as well. But but once again, we're growing the best community. It was absolutely amazing. We're not missing Zuba Mendy one bit. Albeit he still be a good signing. He's not coming though. But we will get signings and we'll talk about that in a bit as well. But on to Liverpool versus Ipswich. 2-0. Mo Salah, Egyptian King, always scores an opening day. It's something like six or seven. Seven goals in eight opening day matches, I believe. People think he's a one season wonder. He must be having the best, longest extended first season in history. Because this guy will always get you 20 goals. 30 goals and assists per season. He's becoming more and more prominent like the Lionel Messi of the older age. A wide playmaker who always pops up with a goal but his delicious, silky through balls from the playmaking position wide right. It's working a treat. And Harvey Elliott didn't even come on. Darwin Nunes didn't come on with Haru Endo. Didn't come on. Curtis Jones didn't come on. Could that be a sign for things to come against Brentford next week? We'll talk about that as well. And I did mention the live stream for every member, right? And I'm so thankful that we got six new members in that stream. Someone gifted five subs. Warms my heart. I will be giving you all a treat from Japan as my way of saying thank you. And I hope you guys continue to support the channel because membership is the best way. It's better than a cheap, mediocre cup of Costa coffee a month. It's like three quid or something, right? And as promised, I will be giving you a snack from Japan. So I'm going to go through every single snack here. Join the Discord, go to the prize claim channel and let me know which snack you want. I'll add you as a friend on Discord and then you ping me your address and off it goes your way. Courtesy of the Miyazaki Man Sai, Liverpool fan in Japan. So just as a quick reminder, what we got for all the members that watch the live stream and the new members, Countryman Biscuits, forget digestives or rich tea biscuits or ginger nuts, except for McAllister. This is the best half-baked cookie you'll ever see. We've got Countryman. For my Brits out there, let's have a tea party. Rich tea, milk tea, Kit Kats. White chocolate variant. Another variant. Milk tea, Kit Kat. Topo, some kind of chocolate filled tube things. This is Black Thunder, baby. I'm not sure why it's called Black Thunder, but it's delish and really, really chocolatey, crunchy. Love me some of that. If you love some kind of Japanese Kit Kat flavors, there's your matcha bitter green tea variant. It's a green Kit Kat. And lastly, Pocky. You gotta love your Pocky, right? Actually, that's not last. I have two more. Delicious premium Ghana. Ghana cocoa milk chocolate. And if you like the crunchy version, there's that too. So let me know which one you want. Go to the prize claim. Let me know which one you want. Ping me your address after I add you as a friend and off it goes to you guys. And I think this is the only channel worldwide, right? That gives you goodies direct from Japan because this is a channel of substance in abundance. The cream of the crop! Well said, Macho Man. Let's go into the tactical breakdown of why the first half happened the way it did and what Arna Slot did to rectify it. And I love his ruthless streak. I told you from the start, he means to win. He'll do anything it takes to win because it reflects on him, it reflects on Richard Hughes, reflects on Liverpool. Now, that's not to say that Jurgen Klopp didn't mean to win every game either, but different styles towards the end of Klopp's tenure with the five sub rule in effect, he turned the game over at half time. We were always 1 0 down. It was a really annoying period that period, right? We were always conceding first no matter how on top we were. And then he turned it around in the second half. Klopp's half time talks must be legendary. His man management must be legendary. His substitutes were most, some of the most effective in the Premier League last season, but it wasn't always that way. In previous seasons, and with lessons learned, he became the final evolution of Jurgen Klopp that we, we saw of. Now, Arna Slot is just starting his tenure at Liverpool. And by the way, watch the last video, right? I knew that video wouldn't do well. A little musical hymn is only four minutes. I'm going to put a link to it at the end. Make sure you watch that video. Smash a like on this one to get this one seen as well. Watch that video, four minutes. <laughs> a little jingle. <laughs> 
don't know what I was thinking. It was good fun. So let's get into it. Now there are a few surprises, not only in the team lineup but also the tactical shape. So I would have thought Acosta Simicast having performed well in preseason, Robertson coming back, recovering from the injury, would have got the nod. Costa Simicast the Scouts Greek. However, he went with Robertson, the leadership quality part of the leadership group, built a relationship with Van Dyke as well. Also, I thought one of the game winning conditions was to get Jota to open the scoring and silence the crowd, especially a promoted team who are going to be well up for it, especially in the opening 30, 30 to 40 minutes. I thought Elliot would have been on to facilitate Diogo Jota, sliding him in for that um, first initial goal because Jota is the penultimate premium opening goal scorer. However, he went with Dominic Soboslai, which is absolutely fine, except for the fact that he didn't play Soboslai in the 10 position, even though he said, Arne Slot said, Soboslai and Harvey Elliott are number 10s. Interestingly enough as well, McAllister was on the left-hand side and Soboslai was on the right-hand side, so you would have expected that shape here with Soboslai around the outside because he whips a mean delivery as well. But we didn't see that so much. In fact, one of the tactical decisions that Arne Slot made, and I will put some reasoning behind it, he went with a very, very standard 4-3-3 formation and it wasn't even the Jurgen Klopp 4-3-3 formation of last season where Trent inverts into the base and you have that kind of shape there, right? It was a very, very standard 4-3-3 and even more bizarrely, something that took me a while to kind of ponder, McAllister and Soberslight were in advanced eight positions and what that meant was there were big gaps in and behind them where Graven Birch had to cover laterally. Now Van Dijk and Quanta tried to step up to form that extra body there for him into that kind of position instead of Trent inverting but many many times because Ipswich and McKenna like to go man for man, man marking, pressing super high in the pitch. One proponent of Ipswich play was to allow the players to push push onto their players but then they drop back into these pockets and the players that's with Soboslai and McAllister managed to weed all their way in and behind them and so many times they had joy. They had joy in this position and in this position and we were overloaded and Soboslai and McAllister were sixes and sevens and just could not get a foothold in the game, especially McAllister, looked a bit lost. Um, in the severe game he wasn't prominent either but he is an elite player and we'll come on to that in a second and Soboslai having got the nod over Harvey Elliott. Graven Birch, great techers, worked his way out of trouble, passing wasn't so incisive first half, but he was probably the pick of the bunch in, in the midfield as well. Trent couldn't stamp his influence either. Quanta struggled to deal with the, the long ball, the long ball upright to, to the lap, and Chaplin in and behind as well. Van Dijk was steady, but one thing that was very, very interesting, very, very interesting about Ipswich was even though majority of their ball was on the right-hand side, right? Our right-hand side, their left-hand side, they got the majority of the ball here. The majority of their touches in our box was actually in the left-hand side because of the fact that Robertson wasn't really in the game. He His passes were under hit. His first touch was off a bit, gave him a clear goal scoring chance as well. Quanta gave a loose ball, um, got a hospital ball as well and, and gave out a chance as well. And Ipswich were kind of all over us. We did have a 15-minute spell around the 20-minute mark where Liverpool were on top and building some momentum as well. But we couldn't get out of our own half and we couldn't retain the ball. And Slot summed it up perfectly in the post-match interview. It's because we were losing the direct ball, not just the first ball, but every spillage, every second ball, every second phase as well. It went to an Ipswich player and off they went. We did catch them offside time and time again. But saying that, our only real threat was from corners. And even more bizarrely, when Robertson took the corners, right, First of all, he didn't beat the man sometimes. And when he did beat the man, it was in this area where there were like five Ipswich players and Van Dijk. And then the rest of our players were in and around this area, but the ball never retained there. Was the plan to hit Van Dijk, head it across and everyone dive in? I don't know. It didn't work. That was the, the first half. And it's very surprising that we didn't play a player closer to Diogo Jota. Speaking of which, Diogo Jota and Graven Birch on some occasions, but mainly, mainly Diogo Jota, he was the only player, the only Liverpool player in the first half who could beat a man, who could turn a man going left, going right with a silkworm dribble. This player is stubborn, doesn't want to leave. Okay, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. Let's reset the board. As I was saying, Diogo Jota was the only player who could beat his man 1v1. And that's very, very shocking, considering that when they play a man-marking system, you've got to rely on the techers, even a Lucho Diaz or Mo Salah, Sob Slight or McAllister, to turn their man. It was only Diogo Jota in that pocket who consistently turned his man, and off we go danger. He slid a through ball in, didn't quite make it. They've got to do better. They've got to do better on a man-man marking system. It switched man-marked and high-pressed in our half. But it's very interesting to see when we broke forwards and when we entered their half as well, it wasn't a high-press. They zoned. 
every Ipswich player held their formation, held their position and didn't press, didn't press the midfield and we couldn't break through that block. Lucho Diaz, I've said it time and time again, going around the outside, doesn't have much end product, but he actually tried, tried on occasion and he had two decent balls in the second half as well. However, the output from Lucho Diaz was non-existent and Mo Salah got tackled every single time he dribbled. He's too far away from goal. So the first half was something to forget. Now, on the slot, is a man of authority and if he has a belief he will go with his instinct and that is why Jarrell Konsa got hooked for Ibu Kanate who is a physical specimen and dominant in the air. Kwanza was the most trusted player in the Liverpool lineup with the ball which was super surprising considering Van Dijk's on the pitch, Trent's on the pitch. They gave the ball to Kwanza again and again and again and again. They gave him all the ball so they must really fancy Jarrell Kwanza as a ball playing centre back. His foot on the ball, these little drag backs is very cute as well. He he backs himself as a player, as a man of techers, right? And it's great to see because he's still young and they have that much confidence in him. However, Ibu Kanata came on, wins the physical duel, the physical battle in the air, the first pumped ball to their number nine, and off we go. We play from the back of that, and the ball pace was much better. Some people have been saying in the chat the pitch looked a little bit slow, the ball was holding up a bit. Robertson's ball. McAllister's ball, Sobersai's ball, it was holding up a bit on the pitch and didn't reach this man. But when Ibu Kanate came on, everything changed. Now, why did it change? Why was McAllister not in the double pivot with Graham Birch? That is the first question. Probably because Arna Slot on the transition and turnover probably thought that these triangles here, the traps, was enough to set off our attack and get them slightly closer to Jota. We never broke there. But in the second half, one thing particularly when Kanate wins his duels, Endo would be good for winning duels, didn't come on. Then, Gravenberch is straight away in a prominent position on the turnover. Now, as I mentioned, Gravenberch has a facility to beat his man. And on the first transition, Gravenberch sidestepped the man, played out to Trent in the half space. And I did say that this is a game-winning position. Trent dominating this half space. That is the delicious ball. That is Trent 100% and all over, right? Trent's through ball inside the fullback into a running, bombing Salah, who, instead of outside the left foot, head up, right foot composure, Jota opened his body off, left footed, shot into the goal. That was fantastic, right? And I had a slight, slight feeling that the next chance Jota got, he had to bury it because Trent actually, on one occasion, when a man stood him up, when a ball in the second phase came out, he stood a man up, he looked at this way, is a fantastic piece of skill, right? He looked this way, sold him the dummy and used the left foot to bring it forward and then whipped in a delicious ball, bypassed everyone. This is the ball that Robertson did not hit because Robertson hit a flat linear ball that hit the man. Trent's high dipping ball bypassed a Liverpool player and two Ipswich players onto Jota's head and you would have expected him just to downward head that in the goal, but he glanced it wide of the post. I knew the next chance that Jota got and I said it in the live stream, He's burying it. He's got to bury it. He's better than that. He's better than that. In fact, that was probably a better, easier chance, especially with how dominant Jota is in the air and how scary his ability in the air is. He's going to bury the next one. And that's why you play a Diogo Jota as well, because open the scoring is super, super important. That is why actually on the stream, I thought Diogo Jota probably was man of the match. In hindsight, it's between him and another player, which I'll come on to very, very shortly. Now, McAllister is an elite player. He is finding pockets in and he actually operated deeper into the kind of double pivot, which gave us the basis to go on, especially because if you win the first ball airily, right, it's about junk balling, street balling, the second ball to get your feet in the right position, something of which all of our midfielders and Luis Diaz and Salah didn't do in the first half. The quick feet transitions to get the ball in a position to play the ball. The ball speed was much better and they couldn't live with that elite slot ball, pin ball machine, the roulette spin of the players. Sobosai turned in this way and dragged back to on-rushing Trent Alexander-Arnold. Beautiful to see and off we go. When you get Trent Alexander-Arnold in this position and in this position, my goodness, that is why you put him in fantasy football team. I didn't put him in fantasy football team. I should have done. No, I couldn't. I can't afford him. I got Haaland and Salah. Mo Salah, captain, Egyptian king. I'm high scoring. I'm like third in the Liverpool fan in Japan league at the moment. Remember to join the league. You can still join the league. The link in the description below. Win a Liverpool kit. Winner wins a chicken dinner. Not really. A Liverpool kit. And a chicken dinner if you really want to, a KFC or something. I, did they do takeaway in the UK? You let me know in the comments below. Anyway, these are the game-winning positions for, for Trent, and I love to see it. I don't want him in the base, because the, the emphasis of putting him in the base here, right, is he can hit all areas of the pitch. But it's Trent Alexander-Arnold. He can hit all areas of the pitch anyway, even from this position. So it doesn't need to be. And even though he's not the best defender in the world, he's still a damn good defender. Don't put no salt on my Trent Alexander-Arnold, right? Don't be salty. He's won everything as a right-sided defender, no matter how good his offensive capability is. And this is a system effort to defend him. 
and he defended pretty, pretty well overall. In fact, the composure shown by our players, even though Ipswich bombarded our box in the first half and got players on the overload in our box and on the break, the pace in the back line, the tenacity, the intensity in defending and concentration defending, they defended pretty well, even though Ipswich had one or two chances. But we've got to be careful. Uh, a high quality team, a high caliber team, with that many touches in our box, they might put one in the way, right? But a clean sheet is very important. We started with a clean sheet, very important. Mo Salah, an assist and a goal. He always scores an open day, which is why I captained him. The assist for Diogo Jota and the goal as well, which was a poaching effort. Sobosai, I love the fact that Sobosai played in Salah, a foot from the defender, and he slid in with a plum, first man there. But what I also really, really, really enjoyed, right, is the fact that our players, I'm going to set this up position, set the scene for you, okay? When you're bursting, bursting forward here, and Ipswich player is, is kind of marking that way, and there's another Ipswich player marking here, and there's another, you know, Ipswich player forcing Lewis Diaz out wide. In the Klopp system, the ball goes out wide, and then you let the wide man do their magic with an overload, and the man comes in, and off you go and play. There were, I think, six... Six occasions where in that position and the normal ball is outside and we did play the ball outside on occasion as well to the Salah, to Lucio Diaz in the half space in that position at wide to Salah for example. They tried the cute ball. They tried the cute through ball into the front man and trusting him. They tried the cute through ball to shimmy 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 see if he can get a shot away to beat the man. They've done that on occasion again and again. And even Lucho Diaz, right? Even though Lucho Diaz, one beautiful passage of play, had him scooping the ball over the top. The next occasion, Lucho Diaz went in the box and there's a man and a man and he ran and he ran and he ran, I think, past one player, past two players, past three players. And Connor Bradley, who was an absolute machine, he was a unit. He is hench. Actually, I'm going to digress a little bit after this particular phase of play. But machine, actually went to type Connor Bradley, I type machine. <laughs> he burst his gut in there. And this guy was keeping him on side. And Lucho Diaz played a 20 centimeter through ball to Connor Bradley who hit the keeper. That would have been a fantastic passage of play. But let's digress just a second into Connor Bradley who looks a hench. He looks Hulk. He's bulked up in the summer. And Miyazaki Mansai was also in my gym for my own preseason for Lucha FC. I'm a player coach, put some respect on my name. Getting fit as well. It's only a 10 second detour. Let's look into it. Do you see Connor Bradley yesterday? That guy's getting hench. Dakara, that's why I need to catch up. I'm the, nut. I'm the new number six, baby. Let's get into it. Hey, I'm coming for you. Miyazaki man. Ahem. Yes, so as I was saying, right, first half was almost kind of like containment. Um, Arna Slot was looking to see what Ipswich could do, how they would man mark from the position on the bench. And then he made the judgment call to be ruthless. Konate in for Jarrell Kwanza. Now, this is the type of manager that I love, the proactive manager. Klopp's tactical acumen is like 10 out of 10. Klopp's ability to man manage is 10 out of 10. Klopp's successful tenure at Liverpool is 10 out of 10. But it was frustrating at times, the delay in substitutions. Konate coming on from Jarrell Konza, 45 minutes in the opening game, telling the youngster straight up, you didn't quite do my role. Even though you played well, you didn't play well for the function. Konate, on you come, show me what you can do. I need you to win that ball, put us on the front foot, and off we go. And then real slot ball, the lateral passes, the overload, the shooting, the extra man over, that is Arna slot, Arna slot ball, the, the slot machine. And is working pure gravy baby with Gravin Birch absolutely dominating and pulling the strings in the second half. Sobosai finding his feet and his techers as well. Salah coming inside closer to goal to do the damage. Jota finding prominent positions to poach. Luis Diaz actually going on the outside and making himself a nuisance as well. Costa Sims coming in. The quality, quality outlet on the left hand side. Robertson was a bit off the pace. Machine Connor Bradley absolutely bursting a gut. He's got dribbling skill that you could dream of from the right back position. He's hench. I'm working my way there with the bench press. It just works. It just works. Cody Gakpo will come in and have a big part to play this season as well. He's a higher metric contributor than Luis Diaz. But different horses for courses, different games. You'd probably imagine Diogo Jota and Anunez on the right-hand side to make advantage, to take advantage of Cody Gakpo's quality delivering and opening up that front post shot and a far post shot for spillage as well. Harvey Elliott will work closely with Nunes, work closely with Jota as well. With Tadu Endo will come in for those feisty midfield battles where you've got to, got to get stuck in, play the simple balls out from the back as well. But for Arna Slot's ability to hold the defence, rein them in, keep a clean sheet, 
catch the opposition offside, work out the tactics of the Ipswich, know that they'll gas and burn towards the second half, can't keep up the intensity, off you go. Slot machine, full effect, 100% tempo, it looks beautiful. Slot gets a 9 out of 10 for me in rating. Van Dijk, 7 out of 10, steady Eddie, pace, cleared his lines. Robertson, 6, wasn't quite out of courses, gave us width, gave us an outlet, wasn't quite there. Growing Birch for me, 8. Now, 7 first half, 9 second half, combined together for an 8. Dominant attributes for number 6 position, pretty decent aerially, covering the laterals, beating the man with a turn on both sides. His long ball playing ability surprised even me. Now, I know he can hit a ball, but how consistently he found a man with the perfect ball where the Ipswich player thought they could intercept and get in the way, but they just knew they couldn't because the ball was inch perfect, especially to Salah out wide on the right. Trent Alexander-Arnold, the golden boy of world football, an eight as well. Now, people want to get him and Conor Bradley in the same team. You don't need to. It's not him or Conor Bradley. It's him and Conor Bradley. It doesn't matter who plays and who starts when the other one comes in for each other. The opposition can't adjust in time. You can't get your muscle memory to defend the long ball over the top, to run in the behind, to chase to get close to Connor Bradley, to stop his overlapping runs, to intercept his passes, to fly deep into the opposition half, to cover for Trent's long ball playing ability. It's, it's a thankless task. We're so lucky we have them too. Is there any other world football team, any club in world football that has a better array of right back options? Now, let's put a word for Joe Gomez, right? Not in the matchday squad. Apparently, he's open to sorting a transfer. Liverpool's blessing. I don't know how I feel about that. He's homegrown, can cover the whole back line, but he's the longest serving player. And if he wants to move to pass this news to start in a position and actually get into the England squad with a new manager who may rate him as well, Newcastle Villa, even a link to Chelsea. I'd love the Anthony Gordon deal to be pulled off because that's an additional firepower homegrown. I, not, I know not everyone fancies him, but he's direct and he's English, which means the homegrown quota isn't dissipated with Joe Gomez leaving. And it doesn't mean we won't get that centre back as well. People like Hincapié, people like Ignacio. I have issues with both types. Hincapié is like a left-sided Tomiyasu, who's not too adventurous going forward, defensively solid, can be a back three, a releasing Trent as well. Ignacio, long ball player, plays in a back three. If we transition to someone on the base, then it'd be sure it becomes a three, but he's not really well adjusted to a two and he's not dominant in the air. It looks as though Arnold Slot cares about dominance in the air. Winning the first ball. Endo leaps like a spring salmon, can win the ball. Kanate is good in the air. Kwanzaa's decent in the air. Joe Gomez was not the best in the air. Maybe why he might be leaving. Van Dijk, dominant in the air. They could be targeting our fullbacks, but we're good laterally as well, and Van Dijk and Kanate can cover there. So it'll be interesting to see. I think any six that we sign has to be decent in the air. Zubamendi was decent in the air as well. Sober Sly, six out of ten first half, eight out of ten second half, seven out of ten sounds about right. McAllister, I think he can play better. One rocket. Bazooka shot miles away, smashed another one. I think it hit our own player. He could play better. I'm a little bit harsh here, but I'll give McAllister a six. Lucho Diaz, I thought he was an outlet, a threat with no end product. He needs to aim lower towards the goal. A dipping shot over the blockers into the lower quadrant of the goal, not high and sky and wide. At least hit it on target so someone can go for spillage. Percentage play, give Lucho Diaz a six. He hustled, he bustled, wasn't super effective. Mo Salah, joint man of the match with Diogo Jota. Both of these guys, I want to give it 8.5 roughly, if not a nine, because opening the scoring is the most important thing to deflate the home team and to dampen their spirits and lift your own morale up. Jota is clinical at opening the, the scoring. And Salah having what three on target from four shots. Wow, what a player. An assist and a goal on opening day. He now has 14 goal involvements. 14 goal invo involvements on the opening day, assists and goals. That is unstoppable. How could you not captain this man unless Haaland hits a hat-trick tomorrow? Who knows? Endo Mareskas, Chelsea out all at sea, all over the place, right? Ben Chilwell, they want to release him. They said it'd be in his best interest to release him. Who would sign him? An overrated, overpriced English left-back who's always injured. Man United. There you go. Shaw, Chilwell. Is it Molassi as well? They're all injured. Sick notes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it'll be really fun to see as well. Um, I... The Premier League is, is now off and running up with a bang. So Jota, Jota and Salah, my joint man of the match. Connor Bradley looked amazing coming on as well. Cody Gakpo with a huge, huge part to play. Costa Simicast came on, short up the line. Konate changed the game on a slot, changed the game. The slot machine is a well-oiled run machine. I went out today to celebrate in style because I promised the missus if... You let me stream three hours there thereabouts. I'll take the kids out for the next day. I took them to Amu Plaza in Japan, in Miyazaki, Japan, a beautiful tropical paradise. It's the honeymoon spot of Japan. Come visit me. You can stay in my guest room if you want, guys. Let me know in the comments below. If you come to Japan, I'm all ears. Miyazaki's a little bit further than Tokyo, by the way, so you may want to stay in Tokyo. It is what it is. Anyway, look at our little uh, day out in the Liverpool kit, eating tomato ramen in Amu Plaza. Amu Plaza, yeah! Catch up on heaven. Oh, hot You want lots? 
Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. My God. Whoa, he wants that train. Hey, Cody. <laughs> this is my weekend. Miyazaki Man 5. No videos on the weekend because uh, I'm busy with the chibis, with the kids. Where's Mia? Where's Triple Me? Where's Mia? Mia chan, call a one one, you know? Okay. Oh, hi. One more. Okay, you go, you go. Time to go in there. No? Okay. Wow! Yeah! Two, two. <laughs> I'm finding Japan here. Tomato ramen has just arrived. Mushroom boy later. Oh, nice to know. Nice to know. Obakaya. Tomato ramen with cheese. We are celebrating in Miyazaki, Japan. 2 0 win versus Ipswich. Here we go. Let's enjoy. <laughs> Good. Yum. Yummy. <laughs> And we end the trip at the street from this Nanja Kodia Daifukumi What the hell dessert? Where it's like a strawberry, cream, cheese and eat an edible chestnut That's really good And Mia tried to get a souvenir to give away in the channel too Colonel Kentucky I'm a man of positivity and I love my kit The sun is shining, the Miyazaki man's smiling Let's rip open the kit It's red I think this is a train top right? Oh, mellow yellow Fluorescent I can be seen in the night sky because <laughs> I'm a star. <laughs> uh, all good. Well, this is really soft. This is actually really comfortable. Underestimated. Fresh. Makari Japan. It only costs like four quid or something. Four quid? What is this? Medium size. Let's get it on. Oh, really comfy. I like it. But my aircon's on full blast. So I'm going to get the, the top one too. So all is right with the world. We have a new manager. We win opening day. Mo Salah scores. Diogo Jota scores. Arna Slot shows his tactical acumen. It's going to be a good week. We are now up and running. Liverpool win again because it's what we do. Miyazaki man, Ichiban, make sure you watch that last video. It looks kind of pants with like 300 views on it. Come on, let's get it at least to a thousand. It's only four minutes long. It's me singing an anthem, an O to Arna Slot. Support the man, back the man, us fans. Worldwide, owe it to Slot to make sure he succeeds. As always, Miyazaki man, Ichiban means the best. Until next time, jane and hit my music. Liverpool fan in Japan. <laughs> Which jingle is better? This version of the song or the original version? Should I just leave this one at the end? I don't know. Either way, I like the sound of it. All good. Take care. Have a great week, guys. Jane, see you soon.